such strange times. We send all these messages, we record messages, but who's going to listen? It's 2020, it's September, the very end. Celebration period of Rosh Hashanah. They call it Feast of Trumpets. I don't know much about it, I just know it's to do with repentance and atonement. I don't really understand sometimes times and seasons. I don't know if as a child of God we're supposed to understand times and seasons. I've had a lot of dreams. I'm having dreams of marriage. I've had prophetic dreams, I believe, of uh, of marriage, of family, of their salvation, of my little sister, Rach, and my mum. I haven't dreamt of Louise, or I don't re- recall ever dreaming of my sister, Louise. Maybe at the beginning of the year, on a speed train with Billy and mum heading out of the city. Many dreams about cities on fire, red skies, stars manoeuvring around, some huge waves, tsunamis, moon going dark, the moon duplicating and turning into two. I had dreams about cities flooding, waterfalls between skyscrapers, boats. High rises, buildings falling down, street preaching, <clears throat> reaching God's people. I don't feel like I've been out enough doing God's work enough at all. The times are late. I dreamt last night that I was flying over Delhi in India and it seemed like a really dark place and it was troubled and it was. It seemed like all warped, like, you know, like if you're like out of space in a rocket or something, just that weird, strange feeling, like, I wouldn't say without gravity because I don't even know if gravity exists. <laughs> That's how strange things are now <laughs> on this earth. Masks, COVID-19. People say this is going to be the COVID generation. My dad, he died. I was driving in the car and I, I um, was thinking about how electricity works and about how the um, auxiliary leads connect to our phones and how electricity runs from one piece of equipment to another through cables. And just as I was thinking about that, I thought about my dad making a matchbox radio and hiding under his blankets listening to Radio Caroline, trying to get a signal for Radio Caroline and hearing Elvis on the radio for the first time as a boy, you know, just under the sheets and hiding from his mum. My grandmother, my Irish grandmother, who was quite strict, would have been in trouble. Just as I felt of that, just a wave of grief hit me. It was like a a spark of electricity sparked off in my heart. You know, I was thinking about connections. Maybe his heart connected with me from heaven. I don't know. I was thinking about him on that boat. Maybe that was how God transitioned him. He was on his ferry boat, leaning over, looking at the water just on a ferry as if mum was about to join him on the deck or, you know, like the cruise ship that they went on. And I know he really enjoyed himself when he went with Pauline Dyer and Steve Dyer. But just like that, like God transitioned him on his ship to heaven and his favourite Dire Straits song playing Sailing to Philadelphia. <laughs> So the night should eat me a kiari. Or a mar of my shield of a cure night. Oh, yeah, you're a sarai. Your mash per ma cornai. Pesari romasila coran. Or nash per naya masaya. Or napa cornaya sharan. Masurna bakurna sarnai, holy Lord, mara 
the world how it was just miss this sense of like there used to be primary school song we heard called it was like I mustn't forget no I mustn't forget to say a great big thank you I mustn't forget and I just remember that song it made me feel so homely but I had a sense of God and the Holy Spirit in it it was like, smell of bacon as I fasten up my laces in the song the milkman sings. You know, it, saw, it spoke, spoke about rainbow scattered skies and autumn, uh, you know, early, late autumn frosts. And oh, it was a beautiful little primary school song, but about God, about saying thank you to God. And that somehow in that song is this sense of you know, that childhood memories of home and mum cooking downstairs and the the children, you know, those kids, like, running around and not having a care in the world, you know, just thinking about what we're going to do to alleviate boredom, you know, (laughs) go and play skiddy slides out on the grass in the rain, you know, mud sliding on the grass or (sighs) invent a game, you know, treasure hunts or watched the chat show and eat cereal under a blanket, you know, just not thinking about anything. And now here we are in 2020 and, you know, I know that the Bible's real. I know that angels and demons are real. I know that Jesus is real, which is beautiful and wonderful. And I know that Satan's real. I know I'm in a fallen world and dad's gone and he's left us behind in this strange fallen world chemtrails are real vaccines are real maniacs are real they really are crazy people running the world and what's worse is that we know it the ones that do know it uh, but nobody believes us I know I don't want this to sound bleak because my Lord Jesus is real my God is real my Father in heaven and I know that he's going to be with me forever. <laughs> what blessed assurance, you know, and what blessed assurance we need in such times. People are wearing masks and muzzling children and schools, you know, are starting to look like Nazi concentration camps. You know, maybe I'm using provocative language, but I don't care anymore about how it sounds or all about about sound, you know, offending people in that way because, you know, we can't be silenced in this hour. There's, there's too much at stake. People's souls are at stake. If anybody ever hears this and I'm no longer on this earth, you know, just know. And if it's time's dark, if you're in trouble, if you're a family member of mine, just know that my whole heart wants you to know that God is real and he loves you. And if you just cry out to him, he'll help. And Jesus is real. Angels are real. Heaven is real. And all you have to do to come home is believe you know, believe that Jesus died on a cross and he died for your sins. Just repent. Just say to God, I'm sorry. Forgive. Try. If You might be feeling frightened. You might be feeling hurt. You might be feeling in despair. You might be feeling injured. You might be terribly frightened if there's dark things going on around you right now. If there's frightening things happening. But all I can say to you is... It's happening because Satan's real. But there's a remedy. And it's very real. And you're not alone. And it's never too late to call out and to ask Jesus to forgive you. Ask Father God to forgive you for your sins. And ask him, even if you feel like you could never forgive people in a million years, 
I promise you that Jesus will help you, that God will help you. You just have to trust in Jesus, you know, the one from the Bible, with the disciples, with the fishermen, you know, who did the miracles, and the miracles were always about helping and healing and caring and loving. Maybe you've forgotten what it feels like to be in love, to be loved, or to, to love. Maybe you don't understand what that feels like right now, but he's so real. And you can have that back and joy and hope. And he is the blessed glory of hope, you know. Please trust me. If you're hearing this, please trust me. Please trust me. Please just ask God to forgive you. It's so simple. Ask God to help. Don't be proud. God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. Jesus really did go to that cross, you know, and he shed his blood. And his blood paid the price. The price, the wages of your sin. Because the wages of sin are death. So he paid the price so that you don't have to die. You can actually come home to heaven and have life and come and join the rest of us if, if I'm not here I'll be with him that's where I'll be um, I'm sad now because I, I don't know how to help God save as many souls as possible on this earth because I'm just a human too and I'm afraid for people's soul, souls but I'm also hopeful that God knows what he's doing I feel inadequate often that I don't save as I don't do enough to save souls. I don't pray enough. I know God loves me anyway. But uh you know, the human heart can be so wicked and selfish. But God restores all that. We don't have to be wicked forever. We can be like him, holy and good and so faithful and loyal and loving patient and kind he's called Prince of Salem Jesus as well which is Prince of Peace anyway this is getting long I'm going to leave you now and I'll just pray with you you know you can say our father who art in heaven you know that prayer I keep saying it on repeat if you if you in need but I'm just going to do a prayer now that you can repeat after me if you need. And this is the prayer that will save you, but you have to say it from your heart. You have to mean it. And with whatever you've got left in you, you have to believe. Father God, I thank you. And I know that you're real. Thank you for my life. I accept your son, Jesus, I accept the work that he did for me on the cross. I believe that he died for me, for my sin, and paid the price for me so that I can come to heaven. And I believe he's alive now. And I ask you to help me, to send him. I ask you to save me, Father God. I ask you, Jesus, to save me now. I believe that you're alive, you're resurrected from the dead and that you can save me now that you're in heaven but that you are the saviour of the world in Jesus name I pray amen